everybody, Rose Matter here. Welcome to part three of my Higurashi When They Cry with Tanagashi Let's Play. So in the last episode, we met Mion's younger twin sister, Shion? Question mark? Uh, the game is being a little bit coy about whether or not she actually exists or if it's just Mion pretending. Uh, of course, this game can never just give us a straight answer. So if she does exist, uh, this could, you know, be an interesting plot twist into the story and who knows what could come from that in the future. I'm very curious about this, but we're going to um, start where we left off with uh, Keiichi winning the cooking competition at school. So let's get into it and let's enjoy these happy times while they last. All right, uh, so as you guys can hear, um, I it looks like I've got the old music. I've got the user interface from the first chapter. I even added in the old sound effects, like the um, the original sound effects. So it looks like everything's working well. So I'm sorry it took me three episodes to figure it out, but here we are. In the end, all of the onigiri was eaten by the principal, so I had to make do without lunch. Skipping lunch, I never knew the afternoon could be so long and painful. A feeling other than drowsiness made me space out. <laughs> So, the one thing I could not get to work is the lip syncing on the sprites, and uh, I know that you have to hit 7 on the keyboard, and I tried that to see if I could turn it back on. I even restarted, a, like I started a new save file, but it seems like no matter what I do, I just can't seem to get the lip syncing to work. So, I'll keep trying, but hopefully you guys are okay with that. <laughs> As if I could eat this curry with enough salt in it to make my blood pressure rise just by looking at it. Is what I said as I initially refused. I could only regret it. The hunger, the stomach ache. まあまあ、よく死のいだよ。あの絶対的な状況下から。つくづく、けいちゃんは追い詰められてからが強いね。今はどんな褒め言葉もいらん。飯をくれ。うちに帰れば何かあるんでしょうちってお菓子とかの買い置きはないんだよ。カップ麺も今はそこをついてるし。我慢して待ってれば今日のお夕食はきっと美味しいよ。I <笑> had absolutely no intention of laughing along. じゃあ私はこの辺で。また今日もバイトでね。慣れない食事はしんどいよ。Oh, that job at that Angel Mo uh, family restaurant, huh? That uniform was somewhat stimulating. How? You still gotta figure out. Yeah, this is. This seems like this is gonna be the big mystery. Um, so far is this twin sister. Although her reactions would make me lead me to believe that it's her working at the uh, at the restaurant. Oh, my bad. I completely forgot that was how it ended up being. Oh, okay. So Rena doesn't know about Shion. Rena asked the obvious question. Ah, eto. And, and, this was something that I was thinking about when I was editing the last episode, was, um, during the tips, Mion, like, when, when we first brought up her twin sister, Mion was like, well, I don't really talk to her very much. But then Shion was like, oh, Mion talks about you all the time, so I'm just like, hmm, that's a little strange. Rena interjected as her eyes darted back and forth from our exchange. Oh, 
ゃん妹がいるなんて話してくれたことあったっけ Shion's existence was already being exposed as a cover up. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time、uh, Mion kept some very important information from me and was trying to cover things up. I couldn't help Mion out here. Although this isn't nearly as、uh, morbid as, like, harassing and potentially murdering construction dam workers. I could only have her end this charade. Uh, um, Lena didn't have any questions about Lena. Rana's face indicated she wasn't sure if she was convinced. She was usually a bit of an airhead, but she was unusually sharp when it came to these kinds of things. As she said, Yeah, I believe you, a, a smile suddenly blossomed on Rena's face. Ah, she's getting more tangled in her little web. I could tell Mion was getting increasingly frantic. I wanted to help her out, but it was hard for an outsider to butt in on family issues. Unilaterally ending the conversation, Mion headed home. No matter how you looked at it, she was running away. We'll just label this one as an emergency escape. <laughs> Rena giggled in amusement. I wonder when dinner is. Would lying down be the best way to conserve em?、Uh, Conserve energy? I sprawled in the entryway without even taking off my shoes. As I was losing the last、uh, vestiges of my consciousness, the doorbell rang. It seemed I had a guest. Maybe it's Rena bringing me food. Feels bad for me. <laughs> a lot different than the,、uh, than the first episode where he was so paranoid about like, having things locked up at all times and. Making sure nobody could come into the house. I directed my listless voice at the door. Oh! It seemed my guest was Mion, or rather, Shion. She seemed shocked when she saw me sprawled out in the entryway. I thought that Shion's existence was an illusion that was limited to when Mion was at the restaurant. That's why I never even considered that Shion would appear here. That seems a little strange that she would come all the way from where she's living just to come and give me food, I'm assuming? <laughs> I like how it says, You stole my rice, he's still not convinced. And I'm not really convinced either way. I'm really confused about if she's just putting on an act. She grew red and began to mope. That's right, she was the younger twin right now. With a disappointed smile, Shion held out the small bento box she had hidden behind her back. So, I'm not very good at picking out voices if、um, you know, it's not in my language, like differences, but that's the thing is, like, do, you, do they have pretty much the same voice as well? Or is she disguising the voice if she is Shion? I, I don't know. And once again, 
here's the thing. It's like, she's like, oh, you know, it's like they don't live together. They, they are in, it seems like they're in different cities, if not just prefectures of a city. Then it's just like, why would she go to all this effort just to come and bring me food? She's, uh, she's kind of elbowing in on Rena's territory right now about being like the kind of passive, sweet girl who brings me food. Rena might get jealous. Sneaking a look inside the box, to say that she just put some of the leftovers inside would have been a lie. There was an elegant meal stuffed inside. <laughs> or a needle, maybe? Saying that she pouted cutely and made a motion as if to snatch the box back. There were some times that made me doubt that she was the same person as Mion, and this was undoubtedly one of those moments. Shion, who had thought I might not take the bento, looked down happily. Oh, that's right. She did say that before. Yeah, I'm not sure about the geography of things, but would she have to, like... I don't know, it's just like, I don't know where this city is in, in um, relation to Higurashi and in relation to where she's working. I'm like, did she have to come all the way back, like, all the way here to drop off the food and then have to go... Like, even further out to go to her job? I'm thinking about this way too much. I'm just very curious about, you know, I'm kind of leaning towards this, this sister does exist, rather than it just being me on pretending. Because the idea of her taking on a completely different persona with potentially a different voice, uh, I don't know, I just find that kind of far-fetched. <laughs> Shion grew red again as she looked down once more. But then there's a whole thing about what Mion said about, like, I don't talk to my sister very much, blah blah blah, and yet Shion seems to know all of these things that happened. Oh, okay, now I'm flipping back to, like, is she Mion? Pretending to be Shion so she can kind of like apologize to Keiichi without kind of giving up the fact that it's Mion, because Mion wouldn't be the type to apologize for things. Or maybe Mion has a crush on Keiichi and thinks that by, you know, taking on this other persona, she can kind of express herself more femininely, I guess. Now I flipped right back around and be like, this is Mio. <laughs> you guys are probably, you're going to hear me probably flip about like 10 more times about whether this is a Shion or not. Shion smiled brightly. After bowing deeply, she left as she looked at her watch. I looked at the bento box that she left behind. A faint warmth spread through the palm of my hand. If it were Mion, I could see you. Hot sauce, mustard, maybe even a needle being mixed inside. But really, I don't think she would go so far as putting a needle in there. I like that callback. I opened the box once again and hesitantly tasted a bit. I took a bite. And another. There was no funny business. There was no danger at all, for it was delicious. That's right. That was Shion, not Mion, so there shouldn't have been anything to worry about. And they did say Mion was a good cook, so... I rushed back to my room, eating as I gave my thanks. It was so delicious that my stomach could cry. Shion... Oh yeah, 
ミオン俺が空腹で死にそうって言ってたのを聞いて大急ぎで持ってきてくれたのか It was delicious to the last bite. By the way, nothing strange had been mixed in. I was a bit embarrassed at myself for being so skeptical. Maybe he has some, like, memories of what happened in the first episode, some, like, faint memories subconsciously. He's like, yeah, she might do something like that too, of my food. I thrust the bento box she'd given me yesterday at her face. So he's straight up being like, I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe that you've got a twin. Oh, oh, yeah, like her eyes kind of went the same way she owns was looking. Mion's face quickly flushed bright red. Hey now, you were the one pretending to be Shion when you gave it to me. You're gonna give it away if you get all red like that when you're being Mion. At this rate, she might trip and fall right into her own grave, so I decided to help her out. Yeah. Alright, alright, alright. But then again, this could be the game kind of misdirecting me. Being like blatantly obvious that Mion is acting so weird. I can't trust this game. I don't know what to believe. That was so transparent. Was Mion always this terrible at lying? Her expression was different than usual, but it looks strangely cute. I really, yeah, it seems like she kind of has a little bit of a thing for Keiichi where it's like, in the last, uh, in the last chapter it seemed to be Rena more who was kind of, had those feelings for him. Mio looked kind of bewildered, like she was waiting for a specific answer. When she said impression, maybe she didn't mean Shion, but the bento? Ah, it's yeah, she's really not acting like her usual self. あ、本当に。いや、we're going along with Shion having given it to me, not Mion, aren't we? Yet her laugh, it came from deep down, and it sounded really happy. I guess she really can laugh nicely enough that just looking at her makes me feel better too. A sarcastic remark made its way into my tongue, but I swallowed it back. As Mion went to put the bento box in her bag, she noticed a clattering noise. Good job. Gah, she opened it? The thing inside was a little embarrassing, so I wish she hadn't opened it here. Panicking, I hit it with my hands. No, this is sweet. I'm I'm gonna be so sad when it just turns into its usual, you know, creepy self, because I'm actually quite liking this. I like the idea of Keichi and and Mion together. She's acting a lot like Rena. There was a handful of candies neatly wrapped in paper inside the sparkly clean bento box. When I was cleaning the box out yesterday in the sink, Mom came over and interrogated me, and I fessed up as to who gave me the food. Then she told me something like this called for a display of gratitude. I didn't want to because it was embarrassing, so I argued it wouldn't be like me to do that. I was so embarrassed it felt like fire might shoot out of my face. 
Mion laughing the whole thing off like she usually did would be fine. But for some reason, she was staring at the candy in the box with fascination. <laughs> she is very- she is acting very un mion like Mion looking a little downtrodden put the lid back on the box. Seemed like I ended up saying something a little mean at the end. Pet pet. Oh, that was really cute. It's all gonna go to shit eventually, but that was really cute. I might have explained this before, but... Fizz at our school is really just an exercise in disorder. After some random warm-ups, the rest of the time is spent doing whatever. Oh, here comes another activity! You're free to cause a ruckus or just fall asleep. Oh, here we go. This is gonna turn into a competition right now. Prove he's gotta prove he's no uh no weak little city boy. Come to think of it, they might be right. If we all lined up for a race, there was a good chance I'd finish dead last if I didn't start off well. Let's just pray that when a brutal penalty game is at stake, the 100 meter dash isn't a club activity. As I began to sprawl out on top of a pipe, Mion grabbed me by the collar. Good grief. Which means, is it going to start again? See, this is fun to, like, you know, to, to watch and stuff, but I'm just thinking how exhausting it would be to be a member of this club. I'm so lazy that I'm just- I would just be like, I'd be noping out of it very quickly. Now that this is happening, taking a nap is impossible. Not just that, with this sleep-deprived head of mine, I'm as good as mincemeat. I have to get my brain into gear. <laughs> she began to announce the cruel penalty game with a grand spinning flourish. But before she could do that... Of all people, it was Rika-chan announcing her non-participation. Even rare events do eventually occur. Losing her timing, Mion spun like a top as she tumbled to the ground. Oh no. Oh no, that dreaded word. 
Oh, jeez, it's coming up fast. It, then that means things are probably gonna start to go in tits up pretty quickly. When Mion announced that today's club activity was cancelled, Riga Chan and Sadako headed off behind the school building. Only I was left alone, completely clueless as to what everybody was talking about. Why don't you explain things in order? First of all, what is this Watanagashi? Next, what do you mean by Shrine Maiden? Last, what do you mean by Ritual Dance? And then there's a whole thing about, like, that happened in the last episode too, where sometimes the, uh, the voice acting just doesn't happen, which is kind of strange. I don't know if that's just, like, a glitch with this one, or if that's something else I'm gonna have to figure out. Huh? Come to think of it, I have a feeling Mom did say something about it during dinner the other day. The Watanagashi is a festival that happens at the shrine on a Sunday every June. It's very lively. I see. But Watanagashi sounds like a pretty strange name for it. Is it something like the Lantern Festival, where they have a memorial for the dead by floating things down the river? Oh. The cotton you see is from futons or jackets. So it'd be something like a futon memorial? I've heard of people leaving offerings of things like needles or kitchen knives to their ancestors or to casualties of war. A lot of, uh, lot of needle references in this one. But an offering of futons is a first for me. What's the history behind that? Mion tilted her head pensively. Ah,なるほどな。つまり、冬の間お世話になった布団に感謝しようってわけだ。で、ミコさんが供養をして最後に川に流すわけか。それが渡流しってわけだろ。Mion and Rena indicated that I had the correct answer with a round of applause. It certainly does seem like it would suit her. Yeah, it might be cute. それの練習なんだよ。結構大変なんだな、これが。ミコさんはね、最重要の大きな桑を持って演舞をするんだけど、それがね、リカちゃんにはすっごく重いらしいの。リカちゃんってちっちゃいもんな。その重い桑ってど
人に見せるのが好きじゃないのねそっとしておいてあげて Even the always cool and aloof Rika chan had times where she sweats while giving it her all. Because she was always so well put together, she didn't want people to see an ungainly side of her. It's not like I couldn't understand that feeling. Well then, I climbed up onto the pipe and plopped down on my side. さらに応援の年配を高めるため、これよりレースを状態に入る。結局寝るわけか。A lackadaisical noon time ended up giving way to mind-numbing afternoon classes. Rebounding from yesterday's hunger, I ate too much for lunch today, leaving me in a horrible condition. その日文字さが染みついちゃってさ、今度は逆にいくら食っても食欲が底なしっていうか。わ<笑>かるよわかるよ。しかしケイちゃんってさ、いつもお弁当綺麗に食べるよね。ご飯一粒も残さないっていうか。食べ物ってのは作ってくれた人に感謝して食べるもんだぜ。残したら苦労して作ってくれた人に失礼だろ。Well, listen to、uh, it, can vary across cultures, right? Like, there are some cultures where you have to clean your plate to show that the food was good and you appreciate it, but then there are some cultures where if you eat all of it, it's like rude because it indicates to the person serving you that they didn't that they didn't give you enough food. So it's like you're supposed to leave a little bit to let them know, like, I enjoyed it, but you gave me just enough food that I, I couldn't finish it. Hearing that, Mion's eyes momentarily widen in surprise, followed by a cool laugh. Kei chan te sa, patto mi wild de ika gen so nan da ke do, kekko richigi da yo ne, kitsuki ga ii toyu ka. Oh, um, sore wa Rena mo omo na, omo na, Kei chi kun te, mikake yori zutto yasashii hito da yo. Both of them were probably trying to compliment me, but I had a strange feeling I wasn't being complimented at all. そんなことないって。見かけと中身はお家がいいってそう言いたいんだよ。それが褒めてねって言ってんだよ。こら。その崎さん、前原くん、授業中ですよ。その崎さんはどこまで進みましたか。ノートを持ってきてください。Startled, Mion vocalized a rather easy to understand utterance. She was so enthralled in the conversation she had stopped working completely. そこそこにさっきから全然進んでないじゃないですか最上級生なんだからもっとしっかりしないといけませんよ That me on, it looks like she's getting lectured Poor bastard 人は見かけによらないっていうことだねむしろ見かけとは逆がまことかもしれない Alright game, alright, you're telling me straight up Appearances can be deceiving The whole thing with me on and she on With Rena being all cute, but then, you know, having that kind of other side of her in the last chapter.、Mm -hmm. Responding to Rena's seemingly profound statement, I turned my gaze to where Sadako was happily studying together with Rika chan. If I went by what Rena literally said, then that would be the case. I could hardly imagine Sadako being meek and gentle like a girl in some fairy tale. Ooh, are we gonna get into. Well, probably not, because they were so cagey in the,、uh, in the last chapter, but like Sadako's family, so many of them dying, and maybe that's. She had a personality change because of it. Sadako <laughs> chan was nice, right? 
For Sadako to play coy, I think that would have to be some part of some calculated plot. Even if she was to hide behind someone, I wouldn't think it was because she was attached to them. But since it came up, I tried to imagine a gentle and uh, coquettish Sadako. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Maybe? Oi, oh, psh, okay. I heard that creepy music, so I was like... Sadako smiled cutely and walked towards me. By the way, for every three steps forward Sadako took, for some reason, I took three steps away. The weeping Sadako came closer to me. I'm a sucker for tears. Click. Clank. Huh? A bear trap? My leg was being clamped down by jagged metal teeth. <laughs> Sadako raised her right arm triumphantly, and traps began to trigger one after the other. Suddenly, the wall sprang forward, throwing me three blocks away. And there I saw a giant metal ball covered in spikes hurtling towards me. On top of that, in the direction of the ball would knock me was a giant guillotine. <laughs> she said it, <laughs> she said that a lot nicer than the last chapter where she was like lies. How could my expression convey what I was thinking like that? Next, I looked over at Rika-chan, who was working diligently on some kanji drills. In contrast to Sadako, her default state was meek and gentle. If Rika-chan came at me saying, Onisama, I'd hug her. Tightly. I could get used to that. Ew. Ew. I was about to say, I'm like, I'm gonna take that as a wholesome thing, like she's just really cute. Don't drool. Ugh. <laughs> Saying that out loud, I felt a tinge of doubt. Well, we know Rika is possible, like, is, uh... She's capable of some dirty tactics and using her looks to her advantage. Was Rika-chan really all sweet? Despite her appearance, she really was quite sly. Sweetly. How do you put it? Evading things deftly. I couldn't put exactly what I was imagining into words, but Rena managed to say what I wanted to. She turned to me with an impish look in her eyes. Like she was saying, Ah, you shouldn't say something like that. Rena said that lightheartedly, but I, as a man, couldn't laugh at that. The scary part about that was it felt like it could be true. Noticing my gaze, Rika-chan turned towards me and let loose with an angelic smile. Both Ren and I, feeling as if that was directed towards us personally, had our hearts skip a beat. Appearances can be deceiving, huh? Well then, what about our dear leader, Mion? I stared at her as she tried to weasel her way out of her scolding by the teacher. By Rena's theory, that unrefined, calculating, conniving Mion also had a side of her that belied uh, appearances. Well, we know this. Well, we do and we don't. <laughs> it's like the Shion is like her alternate reality. It's like her alternate personality. And then there's the whole thing about, you know, in the first chapter about, you know, multiple personalities and stuff, so maybe that's why she's able to put on such a good, like, show and have her personality with Shion be completely different, is maybe she's got some sort of thing there with multiple personalities. Mito 
んはいい人だよあまあそりゃそうだけどさそういう意味じゃなくてそのケイチくんの言いたい意味うんうんわかるよ Catching on that I was struggling to express my feelings as words, Rena smiled even more brightly. That's right. Mion was more than aware that she was a girl, but it was exactly as Rena said. When Mion livened up the mood, it wasn't as though she felt like a guy or a girl specifically, but a friend of the same gender. いい気統合するだろうなでそれは今と同じか<笑>でもねそんなみーちゃんも本当はすっごく女の子らしいんだよレナお前ミオにいつもらったんだよ<笑>違うのもうちゃんとした話をしてるんだよだよレナ began to pout now probably wasn't the right time to joke around みーちゃんは部活の部長さんだからみんなのリーダーとして頑張ってるけど本当はとっても可愛い女の子なんだよそれ特にケイチくんには忘れてほしくないの Is Rena trying to set the two of us up? Rena's gaze focused off into the distance beyond where Mion was The Mion that I met at Angel Mall was unimaginably different compared to the Mion that I normally knew Flustered and hesitant from the unfamiliar job It was a far cry from the brash and confident Mion Even though she had to hurry to work, she went through all the trouble to bring me food with, when I was on the brink of starvation. And she did so not as Mion, but as Shion. What exactly was Shion to Mion? What kind of person was Mion exactly? So, yeah, the last chapter focused a lot on Rena, and this chapter seems to focus a lot on me. I guess that makes sense because the little.、Um, The things I have on my PC, like the shortcuts, whereas Higurashi、um, Onakakushi, that chapter, was Rena's face. And this one is Mion's face. So I guess each chapter is going to focus on a specific member of the group. As if to say it was our little secret, Rena held her finger up to her lips as she giggled. Mion, finally free from the teacher's preaching, returned to her seat, cradling her head to hide her embarrassment. <laughs> 人生に必要な勉強は小学校までで十分だと思ってんだよ。Saying that, she plopped down into her seat violently. Mion was actually really feminine, right? I wonder if I can meet Shion again. I wanted to talk to her again. The principal waved around the bell that served as a school chime. The teacher rushed back to the blackboard and began to list everybody's homework assignments. You know, we talked about appearances being deceiving, but we didn't talk about Rena, did we? Oh, there we go. Hmm, are we going to cycle back to how Rena was in the,、uh, in the first chapter? Are we going to dive into that a little bit? She's like, I'm a straight psychopath. The Rena Ryugu that I knew sometimes took things too far, but was generally a kind and gentle, ideal girl. She was the opposite of what she seemed. That would make her. Mmm. Just try saying it. I won't be mad. That's what I felt like she meant. Lena wa. Um. Lena wa? Ya. Yak ni nat temo. Lena da yo. Daru? Hmm. This question shouldn't have been so nerve wracking to answer. Maybe it was because the person in question was staring at me, but even saying that took a strange amount of effort. It's like I was saying, it's like he's got some subconscious thoughts about what happened in the first chapter, and he, he knows the darkness inside her. <laughs> She's like, I'm gonna go grab my cleaver now. Perhaps unable to endure my silence, Rena's face began to burn red with embarrassment. 
Mia walked over and started to get ready to go home. Whenever school is over, she really does get noticeably more energetic. I'm surprised with the lack of uh, club activities in this episode. It was the same relaxing walk home as always. Digging around in my pocket on a whim, I noticed something that should have been there that was missing. Uh-oh. <laughs> Maybe Mion took it when she came over the other day. <laughs> or Rena took it and she'd be like, Yeah, in the last chapter, you locked me out of the house. That's not gonna happen this time, bitch. Which one was it? Did I take it with me this morning in the first place? Huh? Huh? Mion looked away and began to whistle. えっと、さ、おとといけいちゃん、演じるモートに食事に行ったでしょ。その晩さ、お店で鍵の落とし物があったんだよ。that was a rather unexpected development. Once again, I had no choice but to go and meet with Shion. But I also had to thank her for the bento from yesterday. Besides, taking some time and chatting with this other side of Mion might be interesting. Half jokingly, I began to think about things like this. ついでにお茶でも飲んで優雅に過ごすってのも悪くないな。なんだか英国紳士みたいだね。ケイちゃんには似合わないかも。ひょっとしてそのお店かな。兄ちゃんの妹の働いてるお店は。あ、なんならレ
If I dawdle around like this, maybe Xion would find me before she headed in for work. Hey, hey, what are you doing, Keichi Maibara? You're just here to get your key back, you know. It's not like you're some love-struck schoolboy here to hand over a love letter. Ah, uh, the thoughts inside my head were slowly turning into a jumbled mess. I came to the realization that I was downright giddy. That's why, for just a bit, just a tiny little bit, I got a little carried away and did something really stupid. What did he do? What? Oh, I kicked over a parked motorcycle that was blocking the sidewalk. It was in the way, sure, but there was absolutely no reason for me to kick it. I definitely think I got too carried away. Thunk. Clack. Crash. As the three bikes toppled one after another like dominoes, the loud noise they caused snapped me back to my senses. Uh-oh. The owners of those three bikes were right there. They looked exactly like what you'd call thugs up to no good. They lifted their heads up in an imposing manner and yelled angrily in a way I'd never heard before. The three of them beelined towards me, the worn-down heels of their thin-soled shoes slapping noisily against the pavement. I could only stare listlessly as I was watching some far-off event that didn't concern me at all. By the time I realized it, I had been grabbed by the collar and lifted onto my tiptoes. <laughs> the three thugs were completely ignoring the rules of grammar, but the way they spoke was enough to make me tremble. Just like that, my composure drained away. My legs buckled and my throat grew dry enough to crack. <laughs> I was completely at fault, so there was nothing I could say in my defense. As a result, I was pulled even higher. Three of them continued to yell at me. I had no idea what each of them were saying. Getting further enraged that I was only listening while dumbstruck, they grabbed an empty plastic crate from a nearby store and began to smash it repeatedly against a telephone pole. Cracks formed in the crate, plastic shards flying everywhere. Then they slammed it full force into the shattered, uh, shuttered storefront. Smash. The shutter let out a frighteningly loud noise. Still not satisfied, they flipped over a case of empty cans, scattering its contents all over the place. This was not normal. It was something you saw often on television or in manga, but I never thought seeing it in person would be this terrifying. I became, I became painfully aware that the safety of civilized society was only held up by such a frail concept such as morals. My knees clattered together noisily. Static began to pepper my vision. This is what you would call absolute terror. There was nothing I could do to stop this frightening spectacle of violence. I could only pray for help. The fear I felt was just too much. Would somebody help me? My gaze floundered around the surrounding area. I was surrounded by these three hoodlums. No way would there be a passerby brave enough to intervene. Maybe this is what you would call reaping what you sow. If I were a passerby, there would be no doubt that I would ignore what was going on. So this was somewhat of a cosmic retribution. <laughs> Angry yelling loud enough to rattle my eardrums spewed forth right in front of my face. My waning consciousness was forcefully dragged back to the forefront. The thug had cocked back his free hand and twisted his body, when suddenly a metallic taste filtered through the back of my throat. A chill ran down my spine like a jolt of electricity. Seeing what was going to happen next, I squeezed my eyes shut as tightly as possible and gripped my teeth. Yeah, I was waiting for her to step in. That voice was a short distance away. Still holding me by the collar, the three thugs spun around to look behind them. Standing there was Shion. I mean, Mion. She stood there displaying an imposing stature that I'd never seen before. She didn't have the same look on her face as she did when we were playing around during club. This is another one of her personalities. This is... Brion or something. I don't know. Those were the eyes that would instill fear in anyone who looked upon them. The eyes of a raptor. They were the epitome of terror. At the same time, they were the most reassuring things in the world. 
Mion, with an ounce of fear, laid down her ultimatum. Of course, there was no way these three wouldn't go absolutely berserk. The situation instantly turned explosively dangerous. Stop it, Mion. These guys are like rabid dogs. No amount of bluffing will work. I knew what I was saying was pathetic. But I couldn't let Mion get involved in this. No matter how you looked at it, Mion was only bluffing. But did Mion even know the meaning of the word bluff? However, the reason behind everything soon became apparent. They were slowly increasing in number, little by little. At first, it was only businessmen on their way home stopping to take a look. Then it was housewives in the middle of shopping taking a gander. Next, what seemed like the owner of some store showed up. And it was pretty clear he wasn't just looking. Around Mion, there was already about seven people gathered. It felt different than people coming out to support a friend. If I had to say why, it was because the group that gathered was diverse in age and gender. The three thugs seemed to slowly realize there was something strange about the situation. She secretly, she's part of a mob or something, she's, she's running this whole place. <laughs> Behind them at some point, four more people of differing clothes and ages had gathered. A girl who looked to be in middle school. A man wearing a bakery apron, an old lady in a house cleaning smock, more and more people of various ages. Their gazes, comparable to Mion's, were of hostility, of intimidation. Before I realized it, over ten people had formed a ring around us. That moment, five elementary schoolers ran in and joined the circle. She's got like a cult or something. There were some familiar faces, some of our classmates. Then these people were residents of Hinimazawa? More and more people from Hinemazawa gathered around. In obvious contrast, the residents of Okonomiya were passing by as quickly as possible. There's that thing about that small town they, they you know, band together. <laughs> the group surrounding us had suddenly swelled to around 20 people. Completely encircled, the faces of the thugs began to show the first signs of panic. Nobody spoke a word, Mion included. That made everything completely unnatural, and depending on which side you were on, completely terrifying. Only the thugs' voices echoed out like they were screaming. Somebody took a step forward, closing the gap between them. As they did, everybody else took a step forward, shrinking the circle. The hoodlums went pale as they were pushed together, back to back, while still yelling ang uh, angrily. They were trying to string together vulgarities, but for some reason it sounded like they were crying out for help. I was just waiting for them to get beat down in the street. <laughs> it was sudden. A solidly built officer cut his way through the crowd. At some point, two police cars had arrived. Some passerby had undoubtedly called for them. Several burly officers appeared from inside the second vehicle. Ooh, I wonder if Oishi's uh, gonna show up. Mion returning to her usual self was nonchalantly pointing out the hoodlums to the police. Of course the thugs were furious, but now that it had come to this, there was nothing they could do. It was their loss. The officers handcuffed the thugs and dragged them toward the patrol cars. No matter how much of a ruckus they caused, the officers paid no heed. In the blink of an eye, they were crammed inside the two vehicles. They could still be heard yelling while inside the police cars. What they were saying were, was no longer intelligible. There he is! There is Oishi! He was probably a detective. The man leading the police peered at my face. He's like, I recognize you from somewhere. <laughs> Have a good year. That is foreboding. The portly man, after taking a quick look around, addressed the crowd. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, she knows who he is. Yeah, the way Shion talked didn't have a very pleasant tone. Hmm, this is interesting. They've got some history together. It's almost like she's his boss or something. Like, maybe she is running some, like, secret mob somewhere and it's just like, you stay out of my business, I stay out of your business, we're gonna be cool. Yeah, once again, have a good year. Weird thing to say. The, the detective named Uishi, after jovially making pleasantries, lumbered over to the waiting police car. It quickly set off, disappearing down the city street. It was over so quickly. So quickly I was dumbstruck. I didn't even get to ask the officer what was going on. It was like they came here quickly to disperse the mob before any trouble could start. After making sure the police cars had left, Mion snapped her fingers sharply. What? That was the signal. The tension melted away in an instant as everyone began smiling. A middle-aged man helped me up. What is happening right now? An older lady I didn't know the name of was concerned about my injury. I was even warned by the old lady in the smock. As Shion finished applauding the dispersing group for their efforts, she strode over to me. She made a troubled expression as she turned her gaze downward, blushing in embarrassment. Now it was my turn for my face to go red. I didn't want to admit that she was spot on. I was well versed in the sense of camaraderie, but the way I rescued was rescued just now, something seemed a little off about that. While I was helped out, it was honestly to an almost disturbing degree. Well, it's better than the last chapter where he felt like such an outsider and here it's like he's part of the pack and they're gonna protect him. Seems that she caught the glimmer of suspicion in my eyes. Without waiting for my answer, Shion began walking. Okay, so things are getting interesting now. Well, they were interesting before, but now I kind of see... I don't know, there's some mystery here about what's going on here. After cooling off a bit inside the restaurant, little by little, I realized I was still on edge. There were spots here and there on my body that hurt, probably because I had been so stiff with nervousness. Shion, who had changed into her uniform, brought over two glasses of iced coffee. Oh, I could go for some iced coffee right now. My patheticness really knew no bounds. But since she went through the trouble, I might as well take her up on the offer. 
Even though it had started out as such a lovely day, I had to get carried away and do that stupid thing. I had completely ruined it. Well, a little embarrassed by what she just said, Shion made a show of folding her arms boldly. I was thanking Shion, but I really wanted to thank Mion. Mion, really, thank you. Oh boy, is that some foreshadowing right there? <laughs> Taking advantage of my words, she seemed happy about my promise. And then maybe Keiji doesn't come save her and she gets pissy about it, and then she exacts her revenge on him and kills him. She said as she smiled herself, poking me in the cheek. She seems very, for someone who's only met me, this is her second time, or third time meeting me, she seems very familiar with me with me. <laughs> Thanks to Shion's meddling, I finally cheered up a little. All the muscles in my body that had stiffened because of the incident finally began to relax a little. I wanted to show a little restraint, but restraint really wasn't my thinking. That's why I replied without any. <laughs> I could go for some pancakes too, pancakes and iced coffee? Shion ordered some pancakes from a nearby waitress. An employee and ordering from another employee seems kind of weird. By the time the pancakes arrived, we had entered into a relaxed conversation. As the two of us ate pancakes, we livened the mood with some chit-chat. About what was on TV, celebrities, that kind of thing. Hobbies, food, really nothing more than idle chit-chat. Talking together like this, I once again became conscious of Shion being a girl. Hey now, that's funny talk, Keiji Maibara. Shion and Mion are the same person. There was anything different between them, it was only whether or not Mion admitted she was Mion. But given that, how come our conversation was this different? Oh, I still, I still don't know. Because, it was like I said before, you know, like, Mion said that her and Shion aren't very close and they don't talk very much, and yet Shion seems very familiar with Keiichi and what he thinks of Mion, and I don't know, but I am, I think right now I'm on the side of Shion is her own person and not just Mion in disguise. <laughs> Hearing the word sexist was cause for introspection. What was I prejudiced against Mion and Shion for? Mion was Mion. She was the best friend a guy could have, no reservations, and head and shoulders above me when it came to club activities. 
If I had met her five years earlier, my life would have probably been a lot more fun. Of this, I had no doubt. Then what about Shion? She was Mion's little sister, and it hadn't even been three days since we met. Her relationship was much more distant, as the only thread we had in common was that I knew her sister. And for Shion, it was the same. I was somebody she met three days ago only because I was a friend of her sister's. The difference between Mion and Shion? Friendliness? Familiar- Wow. Familiarity? That- that was a tricky word for me. Playing around with those unclear thoughts for a while, I had stopped listening to Shion. She wasn't saying it to tease me, but had a playful tone behind her voice. That face she's making is very Mion like, very impish. If I were Mion, I don't think she'd be in that situation in the first place, as it's something she could easily get herself out of. Or if... if it were Mion, not if I were Mion. But what about the normal, frail Shion? I guess I'd have no- oh no, is he gonna say Shion, and then if this is Mion, she's gonna get all pissy being like, Really? You'd save this hypothetical girl you met three days ago because she wears a cute uniform, maybe, and looks more girlish? If Mion and Shion were different people, I suppose it would come to that. I couldn't confirm nor deny it. She should have been smiling, but her gaze was locked firmly to mine. Shion was trying to talk in a light-hearted manner, but I felt there was something more behind her words. Oh my gosh, now I'm now I'm whipping back around to this is Mion, and she feels a little insulted that Keiichi wouldn't rescue her. Was Mion trying to tell me something through Shion? Not being able to put a finger on exactly what it was was vexing. Shion, to hide her embarrassment, turned the conversation around. Oh, this I know. <laughs> yep, <laughs> this I know too. It's all well and good until they see you as the bully. And there's my thinking about like Shion is secretly she's part of a mob or a mafia or something. She's running with a, with a tough crowd. <laughs> you might disappear. Yeah, this time I was. I half-heartedly agreed. I knew full well I should be appreciative. Oh. Here we go, we're getting into the dam project. Hinamizawa Dam Project? Let's see, I feel like I've heard somebody talk about it before. There was also some slight murder, but we're not going to talk about that right now. That sounded pretty much like the story I heard. The protest intensified to the point where it was featured in newspapers and magazines. As a result, the plan was suspended. Yeah, 
最初は候補地調査とか砂防のための小さいダムとかそんな程度の話だったんです Wait, was I not? Did, was I saying, did she say 10 years ago? But she said it happened before she was born, or it was just talks about the dam. But then the cat was let out of the bag. Oh, there's that music. If it were completed, it would have been the biggest dam in Japan. Not just Hinimizawa, but several villages upstream would have been submerged as well. The protests immediately began. Petitions to cancel or relocate the project were drafted and submitted to the Diet. They even went so far as to go to the Ministry of Construction in Tokyo to hand over a direct appeal to the minister. The previous landowner sued the government, stating there w a s inconsistencies in the purchase agreement and the transaction should be nullified. Owners of yet unacquired land split their properties, increasing the number of landowners in order to stifle the project. 土地の買収なんていうお金の問題のうちは可愛かったんですそのうち土地の強制収容をちらつかせるようになりましてねその頃からです機動隊とかの暴力行為が目立ち始めたのは機動隊って警察だろ暴力行為なんてするのかよ殴りますよ蹴りますよ私も殴られたことありますしこの辺だったかな Ooh. Okay, and then we know that Mion got involved with the,、uh, the protest, so was Shion there as well? Or is this Mion? Saying that Shion indicated her temple by poking at it. Plus, you have to think if this happened, like, how long ago did this happen? She would have been pretty young, right? For them to just, like, start beating on a child? Filing a complaint against the riot police for police brutality would seem kind of strange for some reason. Naturally, they wouldn't pay heed to something like that. You wouldn't be able to establish proof on who exactly hit you, and they could justify their actions by saying you were interfering with police duties. <laughs> This sounds like Mion talking right now. First, in order to call attention to the government, they filed a temporary injunction in court. Then, in order to gain public support, they called in prominent scientists to state that Hinimizawa was a valuable nature preserve. They pressured the prefecture and municipal assemblies, saying that the prefectural governor ignored his constitutes, where he approved the project, and demanded his resignation. They completely and thoroughly denounced him. Naturally, in Hinimazawa, a ferocious conflict worthy of being called the Dam War began. In order to suppress the police's brutality, they coordinated with the network channels and exposed the violence of the riot squad members to the public. On top of that, they put together a special expose themed around the government repressing the citizens and aired it nationally. It worked wonders. Following that, the SWAT teams had their hands cuffed. Day after day, the petitions and demonstrations continued. Propaganda was used to help garner support. The circle of support gradually expanded outwards from Hinimizawa. Either that bore fruit, or the government finally decided against it. It was announced that the dam project was indefinitely suspended just a few years ago. Okay, so it was just a few years ago, so. So she would have been young, but not as young as I thought she would be like a child. あの時は必死だったけど、終わった今となってはいい思い出かな。村人たちの連帯感や団結心は今でも消えていないんです。シオン said that as she focused off into the distance, I felt that those eyes weren't filled with anguish, but rather a sense of pride. そういう連帯感って。And back to the happy music. なかなかないことだよ。世代を超えて地域で団結できるなんて。私もそう思いますダム計画は試練だったけどそれを乗り越えて得たものはとても大きいと思いますよ The fear I was feeling until just now gradually began to fade When people began to show up one after another while I was engaged with those thugs I thought it was frightening But now I felt from the bottom of my heart that I had been rude The villagers prepared to defend their homeland to the death 
a sense of solidarity that fostered. It might seem impudent to say this, but I was a little jealous. If I had been in Hinuzawa when the protest against the dam was going on, I might have been able to share in that sense of solidarity. She's like, so don't interfere with it. Don't do anything that will make us mad at you. <laughs> yeah, right now, yes. She couldn't have been more right. So many people got together to help me out when I just moved here. Even though they were strangers whose names I didn't even know. A hot feeling began welling up inside of me. When I lived in the city, I didn't even know my own neighbors. I thought that was natural. But here, that was an absurd and pathetic thing. Even though I thought of them as strangers, all the other villagers viewed me as a comrade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for now. Happiness and warmth. I was acutely aware of those feelings as they gradually welled up inside of me. A more senior waitress waved her hand and called out to Shion. It seemed like it was time for work. Also, it would be strange if uh, she just had all the other waitresses call her Shion. If the uncle like knows if this was actually Mion, is this like, would this be something they'd all conspire? Be like, okay, I'm gonna be Shion when I'm here. So now I'm like, okay, this is Shion. <laughs> I say this five minutes later, I'm gonna change my mind. <laughs> It seemed that Shion wanted to say something, but she swallowed her words. Like we hadn't talked enough, that kind of feeling. Looking at that expression, I regretted saying something that had disappointed Mion like that. I was about to say that I could stay for a little bit longer when Shion got up from her seat. Saying that, she showed me a coupon booklet as she tore out a few sheets and handed them to me. <laughs> She's like, that's sexist. She said as she laughed, gently stopping me from opening my wallet. Being told so with such an encouraging smile really resounded with me. Later, today was fun. Saying that, Shion smiled one more time at me. Oh, except she didn't correct him that time, being like it's Shion. I think she's just kind of gotten used to it. After I said that, I realized I mistakenly called her Mion. I didn't know if she realized it or not. Lazing around and watching television after dinner was part of my daily routine. It might seem like a waste at first glance, but you could say it was an important time when I was able to accru accrue knowledge of everything from politics to economics to various trivia. After dinner was valuable time well spent while the brain was at its most supply with nutrients. Today I tested my knowledge of trivia by watching my weekly quiz show. Sitting in front of the television, I was able to get a lot of the answers right. But if I were actually up on stage, I'd probably fail miserably. Oh, there's that phone. <laughs> For now, I don't believe anything bad will come of it, but we know later it will. It was a little late for her to be calling. I had a bad feeling about this. I had a hunch it was something to do with club activities. She was probably going to inform me about what we were doing tomorrow. This was me when we were talking about. She might even go so far as to say we're doing club activities right now, so hurry up and come over. By the way, it was 8 p.m. Oh, 
It was Mion, but it was a very un mion like way of talking. Could it be... For Mion, this would have been an ill-fittingly uh, Ill polite way of talking. But since it was Shion, it was natural. Even though they were both the same person. With a dry smile, I enjoyed that mysterious feeling. There was no way I hated them. I'm an unabashed glutton. Looks like they have a new dessert menu every season. So they were hiring taste testers for potential desserts. Just don't be sticking any needles in there, Shion, okay? They say to beware of honey pots, but this is sweeter than any pot of honey. All you can eat free desserts? No way. Oh my god, that would be my dream. Oh, Keiichi, I am jealous. I'm jealous of you now, not what's probably going to happen to you later. This was such a, a delectable opportunity that it was almost scary. This was really Shion, right? It wasn't Mion posing as Shion in order to bait me into a trap, was it? What am I saying? They're the same person. Shion laughed with a voice that sounded a lot like how Mion would laugh. Oh my gosh. If Shion is real, she got a little crush on Keiichi, I think. Wow, Keiichi, you're such a gentleman. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I guess I've got nothing else better to do. There was no reason for me to refuse. Out of courtesy, I might as well take her up on her offer. Shio might be getting a little obsessive, huh? What was Mion saying? <laughs> it wasn't a video phone, but she could tell I was beat red. Shion finished with what she had called to say, ended the conversation without any chit chat. When I returned to the living room after hanging up the phone, the TV was already off and my mom was sleeping in the rocking chair. Not feeling like turning the TV back on, I went upstairs and returned to my room. <laughs> She brought me a bento and saved me when I got involved with those thugs. She was supposed to be a different person, so I could thank Mion at school. Come to think of it, she'd probably say she'd pass on, uh, she'd pass it on to her sister. I have to thank Shion directly. Tomorrow, I'll have to repay her somehow. 